Hello everyone, today we are looking at a game from 1999. Gennady P. Kuzman with the white pieces, 2546 versus British Grandmaster Tony Miles with the black pieces. It was 2609 at the time. Game started off. E4, Knight of Six, Alakai Defense. E5, Knight D5, D4, D6, Knight of Three, takes takes we have this modern variation g6 bishop c4 c6 knight c3 bishop g7 and here cousin plays h4 which i'm sure grandmaster simon williams would be proud of as he likes to talk about harry the h pawn normal is um a move like queen f3 And black has to try um, hard to have an equal position. But he usually does all right from here also. So h4 is an ambitious and enterprising move to say the least. So Kuzmin has come uh, to fight. But uh, don't be fooled. This move is uh, by no means uh, refutable over the board. So it's a... It's a good move to uh, uh, rattle your opponent, and it's not unsound. So knight d7, meeting uh, the flank attack with the uh, age-old adage of countering in the center. So bishop takes d5, c takes d5. Bishop f4, knight takes e5, bishop takes e5, and bishop takes e5. d takes e5. D4, knight e2, and you can see that black has gained a small initiative and is equalized comfortably against uh, this early uh, flank attack with the move h4. Alright, so uh, the principles have held up, right? That you counter a flank attack with um, a blow in the center, and this is exactly what uh, black has done. And he now... Uh, has a decent position. D3 by Miles, and this facilitates the exchange of queens here. After queen takes D3, simply just gives back the material for uh, development as he was behind in development. So bishop comes out, queen D4, and now rook C8, threatening rook takes C2, and we see all of the uh, black pieces just get into the game quickly. Rook d2 now. Queen takes d4 and knight takes d4. And just like that, we are in a end game. Bishop d7. So here, let me state for the record, this position is equal. And a draw should be on the menu. But if it was just a simple draw, then I probably wouldn't be going over this game. So stay tuned. Game continue with rook e1 from Kuzmin. Rook c7, b3, making some luft for the king, and now uh, Miles play the move a6 here. And now king b2, and from the black side, I'm going to start my 7-step analysis. And if you're not familiar with that, just check out my other videos um, on planning on how to analyze and uh, plan in chess. So we look at the first couple of things real quick. King safety. Uh, the kings are, are pretty safe, especially without the uh, queens on the board. Although we can note that the king is still in the middle of the board in opposition of the rook there on e1. Are there any direct threats right now? Uh, no, there isn't. Material is equal. Uh, one salient feature that... Um, comes to light is when we look at uh, step four when we look for open files and diagonals we can see there are many open files and diagonals uh, on the board okay uh, we have the D E files open C file I'm sorry the C and E files are, are semi open there's only one pawn on each of those files then we have the uh, long diagonals open the A1 the H8 diagonal also uh, C6 uh, the H1 diagonal again uh, is partially open so there's a lot of uh, 
prospects uh, in this position, okay, uh, on the open files and diagonals. Okay, what does that tell us? That tell us that this uh, position is conducive uh, to rooks and conducive to long-range pieces uh, like bishops. So we keep that in mind here. As you can see, black has the bishop, white has the knight in this position. All right, this position as it stands right now is not exactly conducive uh, to the knight. And that will factor into our strategic planning later. Look at the pawn structure. Pawn structure is good on both sides. All right, we just note that white has a majority on the queen side. Black has a majority on uh, the king side. Uh, weak and strong squares. Again, it's pretty, um, you know, pretty much a, a wash here. Uh, each side has not really advanced into the other um, side's territory or has too much influence. Save that knight on uh, d4, right, you know, prevents black from at least installing his rook on c6. And you have this pawn on h4 uh, controlling the g5 square. But the control um, on those squares is, is negligible to say the least. We move to step 6. Who has control of the center? That's obviously white. And again, it's negligible, but white has a little more space on the queen side due to the advanced H pawn. Then we go to seven, uh, development and piece location, two-step process development. Um, we have to give that to white just to, because of the fact that uh, the black rook is still here on H8, undeveloped. We have this king here in the middle. I won't consider that developed at this this uh, point in time, and also the second half is piece location. Um, which which side has the better pieces in general? And again, we have to give the nod to White. His rooks are uh, placed on open and semi-open files. I like this rook on e1 in direct opposition to the king, which is then tied down to the protection of the e7 pawn. And there's rook on d2 is uh, doing defensive duty on the second rank, but also possession uh, in possession of an open file. All right. Black's rook on c7 is probably his best piece. And this bishop hasn't quite found a home yet, although there's a lot of potential for it. And this rook is uh, still out of action. All right. So with all that uh, information, uh, my final conclusion is that white does have a slight advantage. Why? He has better piece location and advantage in the center. Those are his uh, major trumps uh, in the position. What does black have? Black has uh, the bishop over the knight in the open position, right? Because we already um, assessed that the files and diagonals were uh, were good for the long range pieces. All right, so so black is not lost and white doesn't have a huge advantage, but we have to say that white is a little better. Again, this is with black to move here. So with black uh, acknowledging that he's a little worse here, he's not gonna try to do something uh, drastic in the position but he's basically going to try to solve his problems what are the problems well we talked about them a minute ago one is this rook not being developed two the pawn here being protected by the king the king just being in a bad spot all right so those problems uh we want to solve okay um now the general um strategy right without uh specific moves um Black wants to try again to keep the to keep the white bishop, okay, but at the same time keep this knight neutralized. In other words, don't allow outposts to appear on the board for this knight to become effective. All right, um, the knight right now doesn't really have any outposts at all. Okay, unless you know they have to be manufactured and created. So just in the back of Black's mind should be, I don't want that knight to become uh, strong. In the position, and he wants to exploit the um, the strength of his bishop. Okay, and also Black wants to eliminate the central dominance of those rooks. So it would be in Black's favor also to, if he can, to uh, trade off the rooks. And if if he can use the C file, great to attack to counterattack here. But if he can eliminate these rooks, which are superior to his rooks, that would be great. And then just have a bishop versus a knight ending in open position. Uh, that would be beneficial uh, to black also. Is that enough to win? Uh, 
probably not, but it's definitely enough to equalize. And then perhaps he can uh, search for winning chances later. Okay, but for the short term, uh, he has to solve the problem, finish his development, uh, peace location, and also the is issue with his, um, his king and this pawn here. So this is going to explain uh, Miles' next move here. Miles play e6. Okay, the other move in question is f6. Okay, they do the same thing. The idea of f6 is just to simply scoot the, the king over to f7. This allows the rook to come out to, say, d8 or, or c8. So that solves the problem. It gets the king out of opposition with the rook on e1. Um, as you can see, the downside of that is, of course, it would give up this square um, to the knight immediately. All right, which would practically, basically force uh, the bishop to give itself up for the knight. Miles probably didn't want to do that at this point. But this would lead probably to equality also. So if knight e6, bishop takes automatically. Rook takes. Rook d7 offering the trade of rooks. Of course, the trade is uh, equal also. And now king f7. And unless white is able to create another scenario where, uh, excuse me, another weakness in the position, uh, black is uh, pretty much uh, okay here. He does have to uh, be careful of of this king wandering around. But in this position, it seems like uh, black uh, would be okay. But at the same time, you can understand why Miles would not play uh, f6. Okay, but f6 does seem to be playable. Instead of hopping into the e6 square right away, he could have piled more pressure on, for example. And again, you have the same idea with the rook getting out. And now you see the bishop fighting uh, using diagonals in open position. But again, due to the weakness created on e6, this knight does have a place to go now. And you can see um, your position again is sort of double-edged in this position. And so those are some sample lines after uh, f6. Okay, so f6 looks a little uh, counterintuitive, but it definitely is playable. Miles chose e6 in the position, and we'll see the ramifications of that later. But again, but again, he has the same ideas in mind. c4 is played, and now here Miles plays b5, which is um, a strategical error here, in that um, being that White has uh, this majority on the queen side. Um, He's playing kind of where black is, where he's weak at, and where white is strong, and helps white, um, uh, you know, uh, get get his majority. And I just made a video either yesterday or the day before of Philidor's method. Uh, when asked how to win, Philidor said that uh, basically you create pawn majorities, then you create a pass pawn from the majority, and then you queen the pawn. So here. The majority is already set for white on the queen side, and now you just want to create a, a, a isolated, excuse me, a pass pawn, and b5 kind of helps into in that goal. Again, better would be a move um, like uh, king e7. Just continue along, continuing along with the first idea here. And let's say G4 and then H5, for example, again, and getting the rook out. All right, now, white has some extra space here now on the king side and queen side. All right, but black is still uh, in the game. And as you can see, some, some um, more outposts have been created for this knight here. So black is in, in the, you know, getting into some difficulties here, but that's an, another option. So he strikes out with b5. C takes, a takes. And now rook e5. Threatening just to win the pawn uh, outright. Rook b7. And now b4. And again, when we went over the analysis, talked about how white wanted excuse me how black wanted to keep his bishop uh strong you know utilizing the open diagonals and files etc and keep the knight weak so you can see 
that the reverse has happened and this is what I wanted to um, wait for to show you what was the downside of e6 as opposed to playing the move f6 earlier. The move e6 weakened this bishop uh, somewhat and now white has created an outpost for his knight right to become stronger uh, in the position and as you can see even now black has no way to um, bring this bishop uh, to a nice diagonal without being captured so just in a few moves um, the terrain uh, has turned around drastically as you can see all of these pawns now on light squares and then black has no way to get to the um, the only open diagonal for his bishop also note how even the position of black's rooks have deteriorated now this rook hasn't moved period okay which is bad because we already said how we wanted to try to uh, bring the king up and get that rook out but this rook which was once at least on the c file putting pressure is, is now forced totally on the defensive so black's position has gone worse all right again contrast that to the analysis and the proper plan that that i had suggested for black so we can see that things are going um counterclockwise so to speak according to what black would like king e7 knight b3 rook to b6 knight c5 so now the knight is very powerful on uh c5 rook comes out finally g4 so miles gets around to it he improves his bishop as you can see bishop is now in a good diagonal and now a pair of rooks uh gets traded all right thing that's different again is that the knight has become a uh, very strong in this position all right and um we have to say that knight is, is superior over this bishop, okay? Although the bishop has the uh, full control of the uh, h1 to a8 diagonal, he's uh, just uh, hitting on air, right? The bishop is not really effective, and then all the pawns are on light squares. Also, the rook on b6 is totally uh, ineffective also, all right? So, black, uh, excuse me, white has more space on the king side, and his pieces or are better than um all of his pieces are better than blacks rook e3 again emphasizing that his pieces are better all right he's able to get to the um you know critical squares faster than black can defend king e7 rook a3 he wants to penetrate of course into the position which he does king f8 rook c7 harassing the um and ha harassing the bishop, forcing the bishop into passivity because if the bishop moves anywhere else on, on this diagonal, then let's just say here, then there's a then there's going to be then there's a fork here, knight d7 winning. So the bishop is now forced into passivity. Knight e4, and now the knight wants to go to f6. G5, H5, and Knight F6. And you can see step by step how all of the things that Black did not want to happen has, ta has taken place. All right? The Knight has become strong. His Bishop has become weak. Um, although he was able to trade off one pair of Rooks, uh, excuse me, uh, one, um, you know, one set of Rooks, the other Rook is very powerful in occupying... Um, the uh, seventh rank uh, in this position. And now rook d8, a3, rook d2, king c1, and rook d8. I know some of you guys out there want a pawn grab, but the problem is, is this bishop would then be uh, captured. So rook, rook takes f2, then how do we save the bishop? There's no way to save it. So rook d8 was played, king c2, king g7, rook c5, the obvious threat uh, just to win the b-pawn after capturing the bishop, king f8, and king c3, here's an important principle, 
just simply not rushing. Um, of course, White could have easily just captured the bishop, followed by rook takes. That wins also. But he doesn't rush. He's kind of torturing uh, Black here a little bit with that move. And so he basically gives Black two choices. One is either to give up this pawn on b5, but then let the king run up to d6. So Miles chooses to protect the pawn, and the king comes to d4, king e7, king e5, rook a8, rook c7, king d8, rook b7, king c8. Again, same uh, same scenario here. If rook takes uh, a3, then rook b8, followed by rook takes e8. So Black's pieces are just so passive that he can't even attack anything. Bishop c6, and now king d6, and uh, Miles was forced to resign there. And it's ironic that upon the bishop finally becoming free again that he has to resign uh, on the next move. So that was a, a really uh, instructive game uh, by Kuzman. And um, again, let's uh, recap real quick. What can we take away from that game? We saw the plan, the plans for both sides, how they worked out. We saw I analyzed the position and showed you how you know what Black was trying to prevent and what Black wanted. Unfortunately for Miles in this game, it didn't work out. He made some uh, strategic errors there. Um, we we could go back and look at e, e6 and f6, and per, perhaps f6 would have worked out uh, better because we saw after e6, his bishop, his light square bishop, which which was once so promising, uh, there's all type of difficulties resulting, uh, you know, uh, revolving around that, and the bishop never really got in the game. The second thing we could take away is this move b5, playing on the queen side, where where he was actually weaker. Uh, we always hear it all the time. You want to play where you're strong, not where your opponent is strong. And um, that just helped. That move B5 uh, helped um, Black in the position. Um, so another thing is that we saw that we could take away from the game is that even when the, with the Queens off, okay, that um, you know peace activity is still very important. We saw Black suffer due to the inactivity of his bishop. That was on c8 for a long time. And the rook that was stuck on h8. And also the king, right, being inactive. Uh, being stuck on the back rank uh, for long periods of time. So uh, there was a lot of little tidbits that you can uh, uh, take away from that game. So that'll be all. Again, as usual, please like and subscribe to my channel. Please donate. And also check the links below. There will be uh, DVDs and or books related to the opening that we looked at today, which is uh, Alakon uh, Defense. And um, please comment below. I like hearing your feedback. And uh, any questions or openings on openings or end games or middle games or anything like that, um, you know, just uh, uh, leave your comments uh, below. All right. So I'll see you guys on the next video.